The Williams family was in the process of moving into Ashford House, an old Victorian mansion located on the outskirts of town. It was a dream come true for Sarah and James, who had always wanted a quiet, secluded life away from the hustle and bustle of the city. The house was huge, with tall, creaking doors and windows that looked out onto an overgrown backyard. But what intrigued them most was its history. Built over 80 years ago, Ashford House had been abandoned for decades, but the locals always spoke of it with hushed voices. They called it cursed, whispering about strange happenings and bizarre occurrences in the house. But Sarah and James had heard none of it. The price was right, and the house seemed perfect for their growing family. Their children, Emily, age 12, and Jack, age 8, were excited about the move, especially the spacious backyard. As they unpacked, the kids were drawn to the backyard, where thick trees created a wall of shadows. Jack, being the adventurous one, raced out the back door to explore. Emily, more cautious, hesitated, glancing back at her grandmother, who had come to visit for a while, as she was unwell and needed a break from her home. Grandma, are you coming? Emily asked. But her grandmother, a frail and quiet woman named Edith, merely smiled, her eyes lost in some distant thought. No, dear, you go ahead. I'll be fine here. The family felt at peace, blissfully unaware of the dark history the house harbored, as night fell. But from the moment the moon rose, something unsettling began to unfold. The first night in the house was filled with strange noises, creaks, whispers, and faint tapping, like footsteps in the attic. But Sarah and James brushed it off as the house settling. However, as midnight approached, the atmosphere became thick with an oppressive feeling. James was lying awake, staring at the ceiling, when he heard it. Soft, slow footsteps coming down the hallway outside their bedroom. He opened his eyes and listened intently. The footsteps grew louder, closer. He could hear them right outside their door. His heart raced, but when he opened the door, nothing was there. He glanced down the hallway, but all was quiet again. He shook his head, trying to calm himself. The next day, strange things began happening. Edith, who had seemed weak and frail, suddenly appeared much more energetic. She was speaking more cryptically, her voice shifting in tone, becoming colder, almost commanding. When Emily asked her what was wrong, her grandmother only smiled and whispered, The house has found me, Emily. It wants me to stay. That night, Sarah found Edith standing by the window, staring out into the backyard. It was late, and the moon cast a strange glow on the trees. When Sarah asked her if she was okay, Edith turned to her, her face twisted in a sinister grin. The house calls to me, Sarah. You should leave. Leave before it takes you too. Sarah laughed it off, thinking her mother-in-law had simply become confused due to age. But when Edith started muttering to herself in an unknown language, her tone became dark and malicious. We will all be together soon. The house. It knows your fears. The next day, things took a darker turn. Edith was no longer acting like herself. She was no longer just frail. She was menacing. Her eyes were clouded, distant, and her movements unnatural. She would often be seen standing motionless in the corners of rooms, staring into empty space. Emily woke up to strange noises in the middle of the night. She ventured out of her room to find her grandmother in the living room, speaking in a guttural voice. Her words were incomprehensible, but there was something about them that sent a chill down Emily's spine. Grandma? she called. Edith turned, her face twisted in an unnatural grin. Come to me, Emily, she said in a voice that was not her own. At that moment, the house seemed to come alive with an energy that was terrifying. The walls groaned, the lights flickered, and shadows danced across the room as if they had a life of their own. Edith, now completely overtaken by whatever dark force had taken root in the house, lunged at Emily. Sarah and James rushed in just in time to pull her away, but Edith's strength was unnatural, far beyond what a frail old woman should possess. It's not her! Sarah cried, struggling to hold her back. It's something else, something evil. 
The family quickly realized that Edith had become a vessel for something malevolent. The house, it seemed, had a life of its own, and it wanted Edith to be its anchor. Determined to understand what was happening, the family began to investigate the history of Ashford House. They found old newspaper clippings about the original owners, the Ashford family. The patriarch, a man named Arthur Ashford, had been a notorious occultist, rumored to have conducted dark rituals in the house, trying to summon a powerful spirit to grant him immortality. When he and his family mysteriously disappeared, the house was left abandoned, until the Williams family moved in. The key to ending the possession, they learned, was connected to the backyard the place where the rituals had been performed. The trees, twisted and gnarled, held the remnants of the dark magic Arthur Ashford had invoked. The family had to destroy the source of the curse, which was buried deep in the soil beneath the largest tree in the yard. But as they ventured into the backyard to unearth it, they were met with a terrifying sight. Edith, now fully possessed, was standing at the base of the tree, chanting in the same eerie language from before. The earth beneath their feet began to tremble as a shadowy figure, formless and dark, began to emerge from the ground. The house seemed to scream, its walls shaking with fury as the entity fought to break free. With no time to waste, Sarah, James, and the children grabbed shovels and began digging around the tree, desperately trying to reach the source of the curse. Edith's voice echoed around them, becoming louder and more distorted, like a thousand voices layered on top of each other. Suddenly, the earth gave way, and they uncovered an old, rusted chest. Inside, they found a broken amulet, blackened by years of dark magic. As soon as Sarah touched it, a wave of cold rushed over her, and the dark entity shrieked in fury, its form swirling violently in the air. James, realizing they had no other choice, took the amulet and hurled it into the heart of the tree. The ground trembled violently, and a loud, deafening crash echoed throughout the yard. For a moment, everything fell silent. Then, Edith collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath. Her body returned to its frail, aged state. The darkness lifted from the house, and the oppressive energy that had haunted them for days began to fade. But as they turned to leave, they noticed the shadows of the trees still seemed to watch them, as if something was waiting just beyond the edge of the light. The family managed to escape, leaving Ashford House behind. But they would never forget the horrors they had witnessed, and the lingering sense that the house was still waiting for someone else to take its place.